when somebody tells me Renault, I immediately start thinking about Formula One, uh, cars like Alpina, or hot hatch category, Renault Clio RS, or even Megan RS Trophy R. On the other hand, to be honest, it reminds me also about cars like Talia and Lagoon, which are not really the sexiest cars on the planet. However, since Mr. van der Ake, the former uh, Mazda chief designer, has joined Renault, the things has changed for them. Have a look on these cars today, like Megan, if you have it in a blue, in a GT, I think it's a pretty nice looking car. And what about Talisman? I think it's a proper businessman car for those that don't want to drive ordinary Passat or Skoda. But today, we'll be not talking about them. Today I have here a Renault Espas in an Infial Paris configuration. What does it mean? First of all, I have to say that I hate car manufacturers that sells you just a plain car and you have to then choose from billion of different options, from which most of them you even don't know what they are for. Well, it's not the case with Renault. Espas you can buy in three pre-done configurations. Really the basic model is called Live, with starting price over 29,000 euros. Then it's Zen, with starting price over 34, and our testing model uh, called Initial Paris, which starts over 40,000 euros. Our test model has some additional features, like this beautiful sunroof, or a DVD player at the back that catapults its price to over 44,000 euros. Hmm. And a question for today will be, am I willing to pay for Renault over 40,000 euros? Shall we begin? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea how big is the trunk in a liter. But I, what I do know is that it's really big, it's really spacious. What you will do from now on, you will be just throwing things like strollers, bicycles, luggage, or even kids, just throwing them in. Because that's the, how big it is. If you would like to have additional space, you can move the back seats. And if still, that's not enough, and you need to do carry around, let's say a couple of dead bodies, you can hit this button and it opens up the whole space. From inside you can see there is a ton of space here. I have two meters and I can still sit comfortably in here. Uh, it's leather everywhere. You have DVD player. The only thing that uh, I do have a problem with here at the back is caused by the, the sunroof. Uh, I do not have enough space. I have to really sit in the middle because otherwise I'm, I'm hitting my head. What you notice immediately when you sit to this car that there is a ton of space where you can put a different things like for your phone or keys or whatever. Then uh, this, uh, I do call it an annoying passenger attacking glove box. Uh, you have space under the middle console that's nice as well. Of course, as the 21st century uh, we do have here a touch display, which I'm not really big fan of. Uh, I do more like a combination between, okay, we need to have a touch displays, but also I do love a regular buttons. But anyway, uh, it fits here, it's all fine. Um, the graphics is a little bit outdated, but I can survive that. What I do not understand is why they did put a sport mode into this car. I know it's pre-configured for all of the Renault cars that will be not bothering with Espas with a different software but this car and we'll come to this later is really struggling in the sport mode so no sense at all. What you have also is nice leather everywhere, heated steering wheel that's really nice and of course the dashboard full display and you can configure it to your need. That was one funny thing uh, it's related to this gear changer uh, basically, when I tried to leave the dealer and I was sitting there for like three minutes. The reason for that is that what I'm used to is you simply hit some unlock button and press drive down or reverse up. Well, it's not the case in this car. Actually, when I would be reading, I would notice that. But what you need to do, you need to go to the left and down and that's how you, how you put the drive. Otherwise, up and down just change the gears. So it was a bit funny because they've been staring at me like I'm an idiot, but we managed. One thing I'm, I was a bit negatively surprised uh, at the back, I told you there is a ton of space, 
but at front passenger has a lot of space as well but this is more related to me being really tall the, the seat is already all the way in the back and because you are sitting like in a real van like more narrow in a 90% degree uh, what I do feel I have enough space on my knees but I, I do need or I would need like 5 to 10 centimeters to have the pedals a little bit forward uh, so my, my tip here is if you are a taller person please have a look uh, with the dealer uh, how it fits you okay so let's take it for a spin uh, actually once I, once I get used to this uh, gear changer uh, I kind of start to liking it because it's different and uh, yeah all you need to do as I said push it to the left go to the drive that's all fine actually what I do like about this car and I think it's every Renault these days is when you hit drive or hit the first gear you don't have to turn off your parking brake you just simply need to hit slightly the the accelerator pedal or the gas pedal and the start the car starts moving and that's something I can get used to really quickly it's, it's a good feature the story about engine suspension and fork control needs to be said like this the reason for that is very simple. I said everything correctly to the camera, but it just took me way too long and I don't want to get you bored. So this is the story I wanted to say. I really think the weakest point of the Renault these days are their engines. With a Spaz, you can get 1.6 liter diesel or petrol. Uh, we've been testing the more powerful configuration of the diesel, which is 160 horsepower. And I can tell you, it was struggling from time to time. So there is no need even to discuss the Vika configuration of 130 horsepower. No sense of buying it. I mean, don't get me wrong, up to 100 it accelerates all fine. But if you overreach that limit, then the car is getting really lazy. Maybe the correct question is, for whom is this car built for? And if you think it's really built for defensive drivers, they do not overtake and they just do cruise around, well, maybe you are not actually right. If you think young mothers with the screaming kids at the back or fathers using this car for day-to-day -day business are defensive drivers, then my answer is yes. Then you might be thinking, okay then, I will go with the petrol engine. It has 200 horsepower and actually it solves all of my problems. But with that, it actually opens another problem. And it is the size of the fuel tank. It's only around 58 liters. I mean, it's all okay according to what the Renault said, that the diesel has the consumption around 4.5 up to 5 liters in average and petrol is around 5.5 to 6. Then it mathematically makes a sense because your range where you can get is around 1000 kilometers, which is great. But the reality is a little bit different. You'll be happy if you'll be driving with diesel around 7 liters and with petrol around 8 and more. Is it really a bad number? No, not at all. One more story. It's not that negative, it's just more funny. It's already mentioned sport mode. And what it does, it adds a sport engine sound to the speakers. How ridiculous. Another cool thing it does, it just doesn't allow to upshift. It just keeps the engine in the high revs. And this leads to a feeling that engine is trying to escape the car. How cool is that? What I have noticed with this sports mode is actually no extra power. But extra consumption but as i said it's not a big deal it's more a funny story and the solution is very simple just don't use it don't even try to turn it on but enough of the negative news uh, let's focus what is really positive first is really the suspension even you are driving in comfort or eco mode in or in bloody sports mode the car handles really really well i hit several potholes i've been driving on highways in a city in a city with bad roads and the car was nicely floating on the streets on the roads and it really creates comfort and that's something i really do appreciate in a category of the car like this and my most favorite point about this car is the fork control what does the fork control do is that it turns the back wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheel if you are going below 50 kilometers an hour this leads to a better cornering, better possibility to park. Even if you are on a twisty road, it helps you to turn much better and good drivers can actually compensate the weaker engine. Before we will get to the final overview of this car, I do have a few tips because I still don't think I would be willing to pay over 40,000 euros for Renault. 
I'm really sorry guys. Well, but where is the will, there is the way, right? I told you at the beginning, you have several pre-configurations that you can buy this car with. And why to buy an ETL Paris, even if it's a top-notch class? If I would be buying this car, I would go for a Zen. It's simply because you don't need leather seats. This is still a family car, even if you will be driving it on a, on a business or just around the city. But have you seen those cars driven with the kids at the back? It's all trash. Fine, LED lights are beautiful, but you can survive with xenon lights. How you can shrink the price down, this car has an option uh, to have a DVD player. Uh, I mean, DVD player for roughly around 1,200 euros? Are you kidding me? The kids will need to find a different fun. What was wrong about Tetris? DVD player for 1,200 euros, my ass. On the other side, if I will go by Zen, Zen doesn't have the fork control, and that's the one thing I really do love about this car, and that would be something I would definitely add to my configuration. And tip out of the record, if you are considering to buy Adaptable cruise control, well, think twice. As I told you, I'm not a defensive driver, but I was driving the car with the Adaptable cruise control, and even I set up the distance to the short possible between the cars, it starts breaking way too early for me. Uh, at the end, I turn it off after two minutes. That's fine. You would say you can turn it off at any time, but then you will not have any cruise control because with the Renault it's either adaptable cruise control or none, or cruise control or none. So, an adaptable cruise control is extra 800 euros. Extra 800 euros for pain in the ass is not an option for me. So overall, what is the outcome? First category is wow effect. It's about if the people will take pictures or they will just simply stop you and ask you what sort of a car you have. I mean, it's a nice car, it's a beautiful color, but there is not a real wow effect. Well, maybe when Mr. President is driving it, you know, it was an ad with uh, Kevin Spacey, right? House of Cards. Then it's a look factor. How I do look like if I'm driving this car, I mean, same category people like me. I do not feel any shame to driving this car. The only thing I'm do missing here is a family. I do not have any family, so everybody was expecting that future kids will jump out. Uh, I do have only a rabbit, so... Price to performance. Well, I told you I'm not willing to pay for this car over 40,000 euros. If you get this car under 40k, in a, with the good options, then it's a pretty good price to performance ratio. And the last thing, it's a joy. Joy of driving this car. I think it's it's quite a nice car and I really do feel comfortable with it. It's a good looking car, so I was really happy to drive it on that week that I have the car. So even the joy, I think it's really there. Guys, thanks for watching. This was Martin from automobilista.eu and remember, just have fun. Shall we begin?